Hi there, I'm Clifford Bates, and welcome once again to Reading Rousseau's Social Contract. Today we're looking at um, Rousseau, um, uh, 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 chapter 5, uh, 6, and 7 of, uh, uh, of book 3 of the Social Contract. So focusing on um, the governments, forms of governments, particularly since we ended the discussion of forms of government, variations of that. In the last three chapters, we filed, uh, uh, which we did chapter 5. Uh, Four was democracy. Now, chapter five is going to deal with aristocracy. Chapter six is going to do kingship, and I think seven will deal with the functions of discussion. So let's look at this in this regard. So let's start at chapter five, aristocracy. Here we have two quite distinct moral persons, namely the government and the sovereign, and consequently two general wills, one relative to all the citizens and other solely for the members of the administration. Thus, though the government can regulate its internal policy in whatever uh, way it pleases, it can never speak to the people except in the, in the name of the sovereign, that is, in the name of the people itself. This must not be forgotten. So therefore, this is not aristocracy in the Aristotelian sense. This is not going to... Okay, so therefore, this is why we have to always remember that this is about the, the, the structure of a, an aristocracy within this model, that the sovereign is all the citizens, all the subjects, not an aristocracy where the citizens are going to be few. A citizen is going to be, in other words, that's the, Arist the Aristotelian understanding of citizenship is the ones who have authority. So in an aristocracy, there's going to be the citizens are only going to be a few. Here, the citizens are still the many. This is the sovereign. This makes the body. Um, the first societies governed uh, themselves aristocratically. The head of families deliberate. Now, this is a very double understanding of this, right? This, this is a two double-sided meaning of this things, um, uh, in terms of namely of the government and the name of the sovereign. If we have a aristocratic sovereign, then it's really not everyone. It's only the few who are, are doing it, right? So, the first societies govern themselves aristocratically. The head of family deliberate among themselves about public affairs. Young people demurred uh, uh, without difficulty to the authorities of, uh, of experience. This is the source of the names uh, of the names priest, ancient elders, senate elders. The savages of North America still govern themselves in this manner and are very well governed. Okay, this is traditional idea, aristocratic aspect. Elders of families, elders of things, that they're the head of the government, they're governed. That every, all the people in the tribe like this, and therefore there's like this aspect of it. Sorry for that interruption. You know, this is the danger of a uh, 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 family interrupting, you know, during recording times. Um, so therefore the tribal elements, this authority of here, and they not continue. But an, an instituted inequality came to predominate over natural inequality. Uh, 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 wealth or power or was preferred to age and aristocracy became elective. Now, this is a footnote here. The most clear, uh, uh, it is clear that the, among ancient peoples, the word optimates does not mean the best, but rather the most powerful, right? The optimates in that sense. Um, this is 82. Um, in, in the copy of John Jacques Rousseau, given his friends, uh, 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 Divas, as well as the manuscript, Rousseau added the following to uh, this note, uh, and basically a quote, uh, uh, from, uh, a quote from Silas's history, right? Since the small number of powerful people distributed to position, citizens were called good or bad, not on the basis of their merit in the Republic, but on the basis of their wealth and their force and uh, scorning the law. So that an individual's uh, position pleading in his favor, he was considered a good man. Okay, this is this idea. This is that note from uh, uh, Solace's um, a history of uh, 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 Solace's history, book 50, chapter 1, right? Um, so, so, therefore, this idea that, that 
that this idea of instituted preferred to age over natural quality, wealth and power, po wealth or power, right, preferred to age and aristocrats being elected, elected in that sense, right? But finally, when power was passed on together with goods from father to children, creating paternal uh, patrician families, government was made hereditary. And there were senators only 20 years old, this idea, this idea. This is the hereditary model, right, the hereditary. So therefore, this is why the optimates, in that sense, power optimates, right? Um, um, and therefore, it became hereditary, patrician families, and therefore, the government was made hereditary, doesn't it? Uh, he, uh, uh, there are, therefore, three kinds of aristocracy, natural, elective, and hereditary. The first is suited only to simple peoples. The third is the worst of all governments. The second is best. It is the aristocracy so, uh, 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 so properly called. And in three, uh, 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 um, Rousseau's concept of elective aristocracy is his closest approximation to what come to be called representative government. So this is elective, in other words, elect, what he says elective aristocracy is the closest thing to be called a representative government. Now Rousseau does not have representative government. Okay, he doesn't speak of representative. It's elective. So, but what Rousseau calls an elective aristocracy is this, and this is the best of our, you know, in that sense. Uh, as will be noted, however, Rousseau fatly rejects the concept of representatives of deputies in Book Three, Chapter uh, Fifteen. Right? Uh, 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 in this regard, his distinction between sovereignty and government is crucial. Right? This idea that the sovereign cannot be representative, only the government can be. Compare letters, uh, 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 the crit de Montagna, the best gov book set, you know, Shepard said of it, uh, the best of governments is aristocratic, the worst of uh, uh, sovereignties is aristocratic. So this idea of government, sovereign, gov so so in other words, sovereignty is the hand of the few. A few are sovereign. It's supposed to be error sovereign. The best of government is aristocratic, but so, that the worst of the sovereignty, um, uh, 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 in other words, the worst of sovereigns. That's that very interesting uh, 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 thing here. It is, the, the worst of sovereignties is aristocratic. Uh, this is found in Polyd, volume three of the. Uh, the, uh, the uh, letters and uh, criticisms of Montagna. Uh, the, and he goes, quotes, in interests of part, uh, partitional societies are no less distinct from those of states, nor less pernicious to the republic than those of private individuals. Since what is dishonest in preferring oneself to others disappears in favor of the more numerous society of which one is part, by being a good senator, one becomes a bad citizen. This is what makes aristocracy the worst of sovereignties. This is um, uh, uh, shows the judgment on uh, so judgment sur uh, uh, polysonad uh, sonad and again this is published in the uh, uh, the volume three of the Panad, which is the collect complete works of Rousseau. This is again note uh, eighty two here. So let's stop in that sense. Eighty two eighty three. Sorry. Um, besides the advantage of, of distinguishing between the two powers, aristocracy that of the choice of uh, has the choice of its members, right? For in popular government, all the citizens are born magistrates, whereas this type limits them to a small number, and they become magistrates only through election, a means by which probity, enlightenment, and experience, and all other reasons where public preference and esteem becomes uh, 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 become so many new guarantees of being well governed, right, this idea. Now, quote unquote, double two note, he says, this is extremely important to regulate, this is extremely important to regulate by law, the form of the election of magistrates, because it is left, because if it is left up to the will of the prince, the government unavoidably falls into hereditary aristocracy as happened in the, the Republic of Venice and Bern. 
So it is that the former has always been dis dissolute state, whereas the latter has maintained itself through the extreme wisdom of its Senate. Um, and the, it is very honorable and very dangerous exception, right? It is a very honorable and burn, right? The idea of Venice and burn. The first is desolute state because it, it's it's you need to do the hereditary hereditary aristocracy. Burn is hereditary, but it's 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 the wisdom of the Senate, and it's maintained its virtue, it maintained its uh, 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 through extreme wisdom of the Senate, and it's and very honorable, but a dangerous exception. It's, it's usually hereditary states do not do that dissolute. So therefore, magistrates, the election of the magistrate, the election needs to be handled. Left, it shouldn't be left up to the, to the prince. It should be determined by the sovereign how it is to be done. Because why? Because of all the other reasons for which public preference esteems so much this idea that, that how is the government, who's the government going to be there. Moreover, assemblies are more conf conveniently held Business is better discussed and acted upon in a more orderly and diligent manner. The prestige of the state is better situated in foreign countries by venerable senator than by an unknown or scorned multitude. Very interesting, this idea. So this is very interesting, this is the idea that, that the, it's better to have the... Again, this is very aristocratic that a senate has to be done there. A senate whose everyone knows he's respected in like this an orderly manner versus a unknown or sworn multitude. This is representation. In short, it is the best and most natural order for the wisest to be uh, for the wisest to govern the multitude. As long as it is certain that they govern it for its benefit and not for their own. So it's, it is the most wise uh, natural and the wisest for the wisest to govern the multitude as long as they're doing it for their benefit and not their own. Devices must not be multiplied uselessly, nor must 20,000 men do what 100 well-chosen men can uh, 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 do still better. So in other words, devices that shouldn't ultimately things, nor should you have, you create 100,000 men to do what 100 well-chosen men can do. Again, this is efficiency, the argument of efficiency, right? But it must be noted he, that here the corporate interest begins to direct the public force in accordance with the uh, uh, with the rule of the general will to a lesser degree, and that this is that weird thing we have here. That uh, uh, that uh, uh, another unavoidable tendency exempts the laws a part of of the executive power, right? They decided second. In other words, the danger of this is that the, uh, what's going to happen here, when because all aren't doing it, but rather few, this reads the risk. What, but it's noted the corporate interest begins to direct this, and right, in the general degree, the general will do, do this, and there's an te avoidable tendency that there'll be, a, 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 a exempts the laws a, from a part, in other words, you start exempting the executive power from aspects of the law, right? With regards to particular matters of expediency, a state must not be so small, nor a people so simple and upright, that the execution of laws follows immediately from the public will, as in the case of a in the case of a good democracy. So, in other words, in, in, in expediency, a state must not be too small, or people so simple and upright, that the in other words, like. like a good democracy, nor must the nation be so large that its leaders dispersed to govern it, can each make decisions for the sovereign in his own department, and begin by making themselves independent in order to, uh, to become masters in the long run, right? It's another danger. So it can't be too small. This is why aristocratic things must be moderate size. It can't be too small, because if they're too small, then it's too simple, and it becomes more like democracy, not uh, uh, this. And then uh, uh, if they're too big, what will happen is then they'll become masters that, 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 that you know, the, these sections, these, these departments, these rulers will become like sovereigns within their own department, right? That decisions for the sovereign in their own department. Therefore, that it's no longer the sovereign deciding, it's rather they will decide and they become masters of their own little things in the long run, right? But if aristocrats requires some what fewer virtues than popular government. It also requires others which are specific to it, such as moderation among the rich and contentment among the poor, right? 
So therefore, if democracy requires lots of virtue, this doesn't require, it is, in other words, it requires less virtue effort, right? Um, as you've discussed in the earlier chapter. But that, but now, it it is only, it, it still requires an, enough virtue, that is what? Moderation among the rich and contentment among the poor. For if it seems uh, 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 that rigorous equality would be misplaced in aristocracy, it seems that a, a too much e equality should be placed in this. It, it was not even adhered to in Sparta in that sense, right? That even that in Sparta didn't have it. Besides, if this form, uh, besides, if this form includes some inequality of wealth, it is simply in order for the administration of public affairs to be generally confided to those who best devote all their time to it. But not, as Aristotle claims, for the rich to always be given preference, right? This idea of Arist Aristotle, the rich should be given preference. This idea is that they should, you know, should uh, they most likely do it right there. Again, 84. Rousseau seems to misrepresent Aristotle frequently, as have been noted by many editors, right? According to politics three, uh, six through eight, uh, aristocracy is, a, is, is the right constitution in which the few rule with a view to the common interest, namely aristocracy is given to the species either of, of the best aristocracy. So again, that's just, again, this is the showing that Ar he's misrepresenting Aristotle here. On the contrary, it is important that of a, um, it is important that an opposite choice should be tech, uh, should occasionally teach the people that personal merit offers more important reasons for preference than does riches. Right? In other words, merit, merit, personal merit. This idea that not riches shouldn't be that the rich should do it, but rather yes, few should do it, but they should be picked for their ability, their merit. This is a meritocracy. This idea of meritocracy. Rousseau is not, therefore, it's interesting. We have a picture of Rousseau being this advocate of radical equality. No, he argues for meritocracy, uh, uh, the argument it seems to be here. So this is why you have to read, again, this is the very, Rousseau is not saying what you think he's saying all the time. Chapter six on monarchy. Up to this point, we have uh, uh, considered the prince as a moral and collective person united by the force of laws and, uh, and entrusted with executive person power in the state. Now we have to consider this power brought together in the hands of a natural person, a real man, who alone has the right to dispose of its uh, laws, uh, of it according to the laws. Here is what is called the, a monarch or a king. So the prince, the previously the prince was this either a collective person. In other words, we, a, a moral and collective person, of executive, as the chief executive, head of the executive, the heads of magistrates, head of government. Now he's the monarch. It's, it's a single man, a single person, a real man, who alone has the right to dispose of its uh, of it according to the laws. Again, the laws are generated by the sovereign, the general will, and he is the man who does it like this. He is called a monarch or a king. Completely to the contrary of the other administrations, where a collective being represented an individual. In this one, an individual represents a collective being. So uh, that the moral unity which constitutes the prince in, is in the same time a physical unity in which all faculties combined with such difficulty by law and other administrations are combined naturally, right? This is, so therefore, this is a weird, this complete, completely the contrary of other administrations where collective being represented by individual, right? Here, this is one individual, uh, here one individual represents a collective so there is moral unity here, the argument goes. Thus the will of the people and the will of the prince and the public force of the state and the particular force of government all responds to the same motivation. All the mechanisms of the machine are in the same hands. Everything moves together the same goal. Uh, there are no opposing moments that are mutually destructive. And there are no constitutions in, imagined in which a less, a less, a lesser effort produces a greater action. So this is 
this idea of this, 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 everything is in the hands of this one, he's more effective. Again, this is Hamilton. Hamilton's argument, this sounds like Hamilton's argument for the unitary executive in that sense, right? Um, uh, why this is very interesting in that sense. Um, 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 uh, no, no, in other words, okay. There is no opposing moment. There is no mutual, uh, mutual destructive. There are uh, that are mutually destructive. There is no constitution imaginable of which a lesser effort produces the greatest. Uh, Archimedes sitting tranquilly on the shore and effortlessly pulling a huge lever over the waves is my image of a skillful monarch governing the vast states from his study setting everything in motion while appearing immobile himself. This idea of Archimedes levers, levers, the lever of this. He doesn't have to do the monarch is like all authority, all thing, all action. He doesn't do this aspect of it. But if no other gov but if no other government has more vigor, then there is none where the private will has greater sway and more easily dominates the other. Everything moves towards the same goal. It is true, but this goal is not that of a public, uh, a public felicity. And the very force of the administration is constantly detrimental to the state. So this is the danger. The danger of the king is that everything's going to will, and therefore, what, if he's not being guided, if the king is not guided by the general will, but rather his private will, then this is what danger of this is, right? It needs this goal. It, everything moves towards the same goal. This is true, but the goal is not that of the public facility, public health. But in every force of administration is constantly detrimental to the state in that sense, right? The king, kings want to be absolute. And far uh, and from from afar, one cries out to them that the best way it, uh, to be so is to make themselves loved by the people, right? To make themselves loved by the people. But this maxim is very fine and even very true in certain respects. Unfortunately, it, it will always be uh, it will always be ridiculed in royal courts. The power that comes from the people's love is the doubtless uh, the great, but it is precarious and conditional. Princes will never be satisfied with it. The best kings want to be able to be wicked if it pleases them, without ceasing to be the masters. A political sermonizer, uh, a political sermonizer, tells them in, in vain that since the force of the people is their own, the greatest interest is that of the people should be flourishing, numerous and formidable. They know very well this. Uh, they know very well this is not true. Their personal interest is first of all uh, that the people should be weak, miserable, and unable uh, ever to offer any resistance to them. Right. So therefore, their their personal interest, driven by their personal interest, they know that. See, when the moralizer tells the people should be very, it was this idea that there, a great king is the one like this, that this is a king who is uh, ruled by who is whose whose who's own does not let his private interests and his private will determine it, but rather follows what the general will has uh, uh, instituted, what the sovereign really demands. Therefore, the people should flourish. This is but this is hard because this hurts their general interest, right? Their their particular interest, their particular interest, and their interest is that, that they people should be weak, miserable, and unable ever to offer resistance to them, right? I admit that assuming the subjects were always perfectly submissive, the prince interest would then uh, would then be for the people to be powerful. So uh, uh, so this po power being his would make him formidable in the eyes of his neighbor. So that if the people were going to be submissive, there was people who were going to be submissive to his, always submissive to him in that sense, then they should be powerful. Because by uh, because the, the people's power is his power in that sense, right? And give him power in the eyes of his neighbor. But, but as his interest is only secondary and subordinate, and as the two assumptions are incompatible, it is natural that princes should always prefer the maxim that is the most immediate and useful to him. This is uh, 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 this is what Samuel so strongly pointed out to the Hebrews, 
And Machiavelli showed with clarity, right, this idea that the danger of grass of grass hands. This is, this is interesting. Samuel is saying that Samuel book uh, 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 Samuel, uh, 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 I think First Samuel warns about the king, right? That warns that oh no, don't be the king. You're the king is going to be bad. He's going to take everything you have. And then Machiavelli is giving us the, the argument here is Machiavelli is going to give a negative idea of this, right? Uh, with clarity, while pretending to be giving lessons to the king, he gave great ones to the people. Machiavelli's prince is the book of Republicans, right? Now, this is quote, quote Machiavelli is an honorable man and a good citizen, but being attached to a Medici household, he was forced during his uh, 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 the oppression of his homeland to disguise his love of freedom. The choice of his, uh, of his executable hero is in itself enough. In other words, the choice of his executable hero is enough to make uh, uh, um, uh, it, it, it is in itself enough to make manifest his hidden intention. Um, and the contrast between the maxim of his first of his book, The Prince, and that of his discourse on living, and of his Fl history of Florence, shows uh, that this profound political theorist had only superficial, corrupt readers until now. The court of Rome has severely forbidden his this book, and I can well believe it. It is the, uh, the uh, it is the court that he most clearly depicts. Eighty five. This is footnote. This is the master's footnotes. And um, this note, in addition to the addition, is added in addition of 782, which shows praise for Machiavelli. Um, uh, uh, it is particularly instructive to note uh, Rousseau's insistent on reading another profound political theorist with an eye to a hidden intention that revealed only to careful readers, right? Hold on, girl. Uh, so let's continue. We found through uh, 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 we found through general relationships that monarchy is suited only to large states, and we find this again in examining monarchy itself. The more numerous the public administration, the more the ratio of the prince to the subjects decreases and approaches equality. So that this ratio is one to one, or equality itself in a democracy. The same ratio increases in proportion as the government is more restricted, and it is at its maximum when the government is in the hand of one man. The distance between the prince and the people is uh, uh, then too great, and the state lacks cohesion. In order to create this, therefore, there must be uh, 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 immediate orders. There must be uh, there must be princes, grandees, and nobilities to fill them. Now, none of uh, that is suited to a small state, which is ruined by all these distinctions. So, therefore, a large state right? can't be a small state; it has to be a large state. You need to have these ideas, the intermediate officers and entities. But if it, uh, but if it is difficult for a large state to be well governed, it is even more so uh, for it to be well governed by one man alone. And everyone knows what happened when the king appoints agents. Right? This is this idea. Uh, 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 so therefore, this is a limit in that sense. This is the danger. This is the danger. Of this it's going to be. It's it, it's better in a large state. Need must be that, and they need to appoint. Well, but it can't be run by man, one man alone. It has to be appointed by agents. But the danger of this, everyone knows what happens when king appoints agents, right? It is essential, inevitable defect, which uh, which will always place monarchical governments below republican. Um, um, uh, but that is uh, the, um, it, uh, a republican. Is that in the latter, the public voice almost never raises. To the high positions, in other words, in the latter monarchy, the public voice is almost never raises to high positions any but enlightened and capable men who fulfill them with honor, whereas those who attain them in monarchy are most often pet, uh, merely petty troublemakers, petty rascals, petty intriguers, those whose petty talents which lead to high positions in moral courts, serve 
only to reveal their ineptitude to the people as soon as these men are in place. So therefore the difference, monarch, Republican, okay. therefore the monarchical versus Republican, this is very interesting, this difference. Monarchical, what happens is public men, public voice, therefore these are enlightened, capable men who are filled with honor. Monarchical government, so there's a, there's, is, is, is that a distinction between monarchical, okay. This is interesting that we have a monarch. We, we have in here the discussion of a monarchical state, monarchy, right? This is one of the king, the king in a sense, right? Uh, there's a danger here. The monarchical government is that they tend not to be the capable. It's Republican government, uh, and Republican government is most likely going to be the democ. Uh, again, following Montesquieu, uh, 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 democracy or aristocracy, right? This is again, this is kind of Montesquieu in the, like this, but. Mm, of here, so let's continue here, right? He says, for a monarchical state to be well governed, its size or extent would have to be measured by the capacities of the one who governs. It is easier to conquer than to administer. So that's very interesting. It's, it's easier to conquer than to administer. It is easier to conquer than to administer. Uh, with a big enough lever, it is possible to move the world with one finger, but holding it up requires the shoulders of Hercules, or Atlas. And Atlas the shoulder, right? In the sense of Atlas, right? But Hercules shoulders, big shoulders, strong person, strength, power. You can, uh, you can, um, to move it is easy, but to support it, holding it up requires strength. If the stay is, the uh, if the stay is. The least bit large, the prince is almost always too small. When on the contrary, it happens that the state is too small for it, its leaders, um, which is very rare. It is still badly governed because the leader always pursuing those, uh, pursuing his grandiose visions forgets the people's interest and by misleading, misusing his excessive talents makes them l no less unhappy than does a stupid leader who is limited by his lack of talent. So therefore, even a good leader, if it's too too small for people, does tries to do too much, and it makes him uh, his too much visions, too much grandiose, and therefore makes the people unhappy. Okay, even if he had, even if he did not have any talent, right? The same thing. The kingdom would, to uh, so uh, so to speak, have to expand or shrink with each reign, depending on the competence of the prince. In contrast, because of the talent of the Senate are more stable, the state can have in, uh, uh, invariable boundaries, invariable boundaries, and the admission and the administration to be no less well run. So, therefore, that's very interesting. That the, um, if everything depends on the king, then the problem about the question of how big the state has to grow and smart, uh, about the shrink and grow and shrink and grow based on the capacities and abilities of the prince. Whereas if, um, uh, um, with, it, 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 but if it's run by a Senate, it can be what? It can be in, have invariable boundaries and administration can be no less well run in that sense, right? This is the, so therefore this is interesting. So a Republican aristocratic system run by a Republic versus a monarchy, right? This is that, that central claim. But the most evident drawback of the government of one man is the lack of con con continuous successions, which in uh, uh, the, uh, the two other regimes form an unbroken bond. So therefore, in other words, uh, uh, that succession, the question of succession. There's no question of succession in the aristocratic or the there seems to be no question of succession, a problem of succession in that, but king it does, right? Because each king is a one, when one king dies, another is needed. Election leaves dangerous intervals. There are stormy and, and, and useless. They are stormy and useless. The citizens have a, have a disinterestedness and a, 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 a and in, a, integrity rarely found in this form of government. So therefore, disinterested and integrity are rarely found in this form of government. This government is interestedness and a, a, a lack of integrity, right? Intrigue and corruption are involved. Right? The question of succession and this, this, this is good. It is difficult for one um, 
it is difficult for one to whom the state had been sold had uh, uh, the state had been sold not to sell it in turn and compens uh, and compensate at the expense of, of the poor for the money that has been extorted from him by the powerful sooner or later everything becomes venal under such administration and peace then enjoyed under kings is worse than disorder under uh, uh, the interregia. So therefore, the, this corruption, this idea, this interrupt, new king comes in there, this idea of uh, of of this comes in here, it has to get, in order to become king, you have to raise money, you have to take the money from people and subjects, and therefore everything becomes kind of disorder. And even though you have peace now from the interregia, the disorder of inter, inter, interregia is disorder, but what happens is what then it's going to be uh, uh, the administration is going to be problematic in that sense right so therefore this is what he says that election leaves dangerous intervals right stormy everything said not and therefore in this stormy situation disinterested in, in integrity is really gone it's in, intrigue and corruption and the corruption leads to a situation which it's bought and sold new kings are donors so if you need a regulatory element to this thing what has been done to prevent these evils right crowns have been made hereditary in certain families and 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 an order of succession has been established which prevents all disputes when kings die so therefore you don't have elected monarchies elected monarchies like this can create succession problems crisis you have to have you need to have hereditary monarchy that's one way you prevent this problem of succession is in buying of kingship right which is to say that by substituting the, the drawback of regencies that for, uh, of elect the, the drawback of regencies for that of elections apparent uh, apparent tranquility has been preferred to wise administration and that the risk of having children monsters or imbeciles for leaders has been preferred to having to argue over the choice of good kings right so therefore this is that whole point right here in other words that it's it's you know the question of okay these children they grow the kings are idiots morons or monsters well uh, that's less the smoothness of transition without interregnaries is better than that a, a a discussion of a good king because of that problem he says that that sometimes it's not going to be the good person that wins it's going to be the one who buys it the best um um so therefore this, this is the problem this is the cost of monarchy but you, what we we to avoid the crisis of uh, elections or interregnums and elections we'd have succession which won the risks of you know the fact that we're stuck with a monster or stuck with an imbecile or stuck with that right in other words at risk of having a child uh, having children monster or imbeciles for leaders has been preferred to having to argue over the choice of good kings people have not considered that in um, being thus exposed to the risk of in other words people have not considered that in being thus exposed to the risks of the alternative, they have almost all uh, all the odds against them, right? In that sense, they have all the odds against them. Well, in that sense, and there's a, in this situation, they have either they are, uh, uh, they have the situation of the election of good kings as well. It's not going to be the good king. It's going to be too much trouble, a lot of chaos, a lot of things. And it's not going to be disinterested. It's going to be the, the most corrupt people getting it and winning. And then this one is they're running the risk of that the succession, if the section is hereditary and it's simply like they that, then we're stuck. What happens if the child is not that bright or that's you know monster or, or or a young kid who doesn't can't a child who can't rule, a monster or an idiot. Okay. This, you know, Dionysus the younger answered very sensibly when his father, approaching him for shameful asked, uh, approaching him for a shameful action, asked, "Have I given you such an example?" Uh, uh, and replied, "His son, your fa uh, your father wasn't a king." In other words, in other words uh, 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 again, this is that Dionysus the. <laughs> younger said, I, I, I have this now, uh, 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 87. I, in other words, Plutarch sayings of kings uh, in Moralia, 
Okay. Uh, in the Greek, Dionysus then calls his father a tyrant, terror, not a king. Compare Rousseau's second footnote to uh, Book 3, Chapter 10. Now, what's up? In other words, this is that weird thing that there's a tyrant here. Really. Dionysus, Plutarch, is, uh, you're a tyrant, not a king. Um, your father was a king. Your father wasn't a tyrant. So therefore, Dionysus, the younger, says Dionysus is the older. Right? Uh, but, well, your father wasn't a tyrant. You know, as you were raised rightly. I, I was raised by you. you know. Everything conspires to deprive, um, everything conspires to deprive the justice and reason a man raised to command others. Sorry, hiccup, hiccup. Everything conspires to deprive of, uh, of justice and reason a man raised to command others. So, in other words, those who are in command is usually deprived of justice and reason. A great effort is made, it is said, to teach young princes the art of ruling. It, it does not appear that this education does them any good. <laughs> it would be better uh, 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 to start by teaching them the art of obeying. That's the whole point of what scissors are. First you obey and then that. The, uh, 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 the most famous kings in history were not brought up to rule. In a science that is never less well known than after it has been learned. Uh, and that is better acquired by obtaining uh, uh, than by commanding. This is from uh, Nalam Quinnis es, es, es brevi. Umbarium maricolum rerum delectus conge qui ad notorum no 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 lirius sub alto principe involuntary voluntary prince. Now this is uh, uh, Latin right there from there. This is note eighty eight. I'm going to read eighty eight. I'm not going to do it in the text. Um, translation of the Latin. Um, in other words, the most practical and shortest method of distinguishing between good, good and bad measures is to think what you yourself would or would not like under another emperor. This is from Tacitus, History 1, uh, 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 Book 1, History, Book 1, uh, 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 Line 16. Um, this is a complete work of had the most again repeat the, the, the Latin is what the most practical and shortest method of distinguishing between good and bad measures is to think what you yourself would or would not like under another emperor. In other words, do unto others as you would want others to do unto you. The silver rule, not do unto others as you would want. Uh, do unto others as okay. Do unto others as you'd want them to have done to you. Right? That is kind of, you know, we think of the biblical quote, do it to them. Um, well, that's the silver rule. Do unto others as what you, you would like to have done on you. One consequence of this lack of co uh, coherence is the ins instability of a royal form of government, which guided sometimes by one plan and sometimes by another, according to the character of the ruling prince or of those ru ruling for him, cannot have a, fixed, uh, 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 have a fixed object for law, nor a constant mode of conduct. Right? That's the problem. This is why the lack of coherence in that sense is that either that the prince himself is going to, is, 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 his character is going to fluctuate based on his interests and his wants and his desires, or those who, who are going to be ruling him for this. Oh, God, I'm getting sketchy nosy. This is not good. Um, this variability always causes a state to facilitate from maxim to maxim, from project to project, and does not occur in other governments where the prince is always the same. So therefore, the aristocracy and democracy, the prince is always the same. It, is also, it also appears that, in general, although there may be more cunning in the royal court, there is more wisdom in the Senate. So cunning in the royal court, but then the Senate is the wisdom, more wisdom in the Senate. And that republics pursue their goals by means of policies that are more consistent and better followed. 
whereas each revolution in a royal ministry causes one in the state, uh, given uh, the maxim common to all ministers and almost all kings of doing the reverse of their predecessors in everything, right? This idea of, of kings and ministers do the opposite of their predecessors, right? So one a change, every revolution in royal ministry causes a change in the state. This is the danger that the Senate is more going to be continuous, consistent, and also pursue better policies by policies, changes in policies rather than revolutions in personnel and changes like this. And therefore, the revolutions in personnel leads to changes of procedures and change of policy. Uh, the, uh, this same incoherence also provides the answer to a sophism that is habitually used by theorists of royalty, right? This is this. Uh, uh, not only is civil government compared to domestic government and the prince to the father of a family, an era altogether refuted, but this both by Aristotle and by Locke, and you know, not Rousseau in a sense, right? But this magistrate is liberally given all the virtues he might need, and it is always assumed that the prince is what he ought to be. With the help of this assumption, royal government is an e evidently preferable to any other, because he, uh, because it is incontestably the strongest, and to and to be the best as well, it lacks only a corporate will more consistent with the general will. Right? This this is the argument. This is the, it, it, you know, in other words, if if it's virtuous, then the only problem is that. The only limit, I mean, it's, it's, it has unitary will, it has, uh, it, 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 it's able to do things more, has more power, it's more effective, it's more like this, but the, therefore it's a strong, it's, it's not the strongest, it has the, and to be the best as well, right, it lacks only what a corporate will more consistent with, because its corporate will is tied to the private will, not with the general will, right, that's that whole thing. But this is assuming that this is like that. And this is why he's saying that, wait a minute. No, two things. One, it's not like the family, not like the domestic wing. So therefore, that's one thing. Second thing, it gives them the optimal situation. It doesn't highlight some of the, all the problems of this, right? All the costs and the, the trade-offs that happen. Is, in other words, all the virtues he might need. And be it always assumed that the prince uh, is what he ought to be, right? And without the some this without this, then the royal government is evidently best, right? But if according to Plato, and this is, this is the statesman, right, uh, a king by nature is such a rare person, how many times will nature and chance combine to crown him? And if royal education necessarily corrupts those who receive it. What is to be hoped for from a series of men brought up to rule? In other words, in other words royal education corrupts. Now, again, this is, uh, I want to do 89 here for a second to note. Um, 89 is Rousseau's, again, refers to Plato's statesman, right? Rousseau's, uh, frequency of Rousseau's reference to the statesman combined with the surprising absence of reference to the Republic deserves comment. Could it be like Plato Rousseau was seeking a statesman, not a monarch, but a legislator, right? Among the fragments presumably intended for Rousseau, uh, intended project political constitution is a list of chapters, including an examination of Plato's Republic, which is again, the deed three, the deed uh, edition of Rousseau's correct works, and a preface which says, I like to flatter myself that one day some statesman will be a citizen, that he will not um, he will not uh, uh, change things solely to do otherwise than his predecessors, but to act so that they are better. That he will not have the public that that he will not have the public welfare constantly in his mouth, but that he wills that he will have it a little in his heart that he will not make people unhappy to st strengthen his authority, but that he will lose his authority to establish the happiness of peoples, that by, uh, 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 by a happy choice he will see this book, that my 
unformulated ideas will lead him to think of a more uh, 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 useful one, that he will, uh, will work to make men better and happier, and that I will have contributed something to this effort. This chimera has set up, uh, set me to writing, set me to writing. Now, uh, this is, again, the, the third volume of Pitt Lead. And Rousseau's longing for a superhuman genius who would exercise creative legislative authority. This is um, uh, uh, found in Judas Scalar's uh, thing. Rousseau's images, uh, images of authority, the superhuman genius. And that's that, the legislature in that sense. This idea is hero in a sense. So, uh, uh, but according to Plato, the king by nature is such a rare person. How many times will the nature and chance combine to crown him, right? It's not going to happen. And if royal uh, uh, education necessarily corrupts those who receive it, what is to be hoped for from a series of men who brought up the rule, right? Uh, it, is surely de uh, uh, it is surely deliberate self-deception, right, than to confuse royal government with a good that of a good king. So royal government is not that of a good king. Is not a good king or a government is not is not the same thing. Right? In order to see what this government is in essence, it must be considered under under stupid or wicked princes, for they are uh, uh, f for either they are like this when they are they ascend to the throne or the throne makes them so. These difficulties have not escaped the notice of our authors, but they have not been troubled by them. The remedy, they say, is to obey uh, uh, without a murmur. God in his anger gives us bad kings, and they must be endured as punishment from heaven. This discourse is doubly edifying, but I am not sure whether it would be better suited to the pulpit than a book of political theory. In other words, okay, the pulpit may argue this, Oh, the, the kings are, you know, wicked kings and bad government is a punishment by God to you. Pulpit may say that, but not political theorists. Uh, um, what can be said of a doctor who permits mer promises miracles and whose art consists, and whose, whose whole art consists of exhorting the sick to be patient? In other words, bad doctor, right? Everyone knows perfectly well that when there is a bad government, it must be endured. The question is, what would be a good one? So therefore, the question of good one. Now, chapter seven, now we get the question of mixed government. So this is how we end this chapter here. Um, um, I think chapter seven is that, that, that thing. So mixed government. So therefore, we had in the book four, uh, we had democracy, uh, 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 five, Aristocracy six is now mixed governments. Okay, properly speaking, there is no simple government. So therefore, it is very simple. Again, this is Aristotle. No simple regimes. This is the idea. There's no simple regime. So, very rare simple regimes. A single leader must have subordinate magistrates. A popular government must have a leader. Thus, in the division of the executive power, there is always a graduation from the many to few, with the difference that sometimes the many depends on the few and sometimes the few on the many. Occasionally, there is an equal division. Whether, uh, whether the constituent parts are mutually dependent, as in the government of England, or, the, uh, or, or when the authority of each part is independent, but incomplete, as in Poland, right? So different examples of this, right? Uh, in that sense, that there is what that you have a, a mutual dependent, the parts of the constitution is mutually dependent as in government in, in England, right? The different parts like this king, parliament, uh, house of lords, house of lords, and courts, right? And here the parliament of government is you know, the same in the, you know, it, it, because uh, the latter form is bad, this form is bad, because there is no unity in the government and the state lacks cohesion. In other words, each part is independent but incomplete. That's very interesting. Rousseau was saying that the problem with the Polish constitution is that the same in this, in other words, you have to understand the English model, the English parliament is not separate. The English parliament is a product of the king. It is that it's a different function. 
that the the king and parliament is that this is the uh, of the sovereign entity that parliament is done as a tool of the king as david stockton constantly says and the courts are again tools of that of the king royal power uh, so therefore there is a unitary or there is mutual in other words they're mutually dependent in english crown but rather they each are independent but incomplete so the king in the same the, the latter lacks incoherent right which is better a simple or mixed government which is better so the question is much debated among political theorists right and it requires the same answer that i said concerning all of the forms of government in other words it depends right? depends on the situation Simple government is simple government is the best in itself, but the very fact that it is simple by the very fact that it is simple, right? That it's yes, this simple government is best in itself because by the very fact it's simple. But when the executive power does not depend enough on the legislative power, that is when there is a great ratio between the prince and the sovereign and between the people and the prince this defect is in proportion must be remedied by dividing the government so therefore the, the extreme ratio like this you need to divide the government if the ratio of the sovereign to the government is a fraction whereas that of the government to the state is, is a whole number uh, uh, again, book three, note chapter one, and Petri, note. In practice, the ratio of the prince to sovereign should always be greater than the ratio of the people to the prince, uh, 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 less than unity. So again, repeat that. In other words, if the ratio of the sovereign to the government is a fraction, the ratio of that of the sovereign to the government is a fraction, whereas that of the government to the state is a whole number, right? In practice, the ratio of the prince to the sovereign is always greater than the ratio of the people to the uh, 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 prince, than to the unity of this between the king. That's that weird note key there in that sense. So therefore, there has to be the greater ratio in that sense. In that sense, for this is again, this is this this, this kind of a geometry of politics that we're so hints on. Uh, with the disclaimer that you're not going to, it's not going, it's going to lack the precision of geometry <clears throat> in that sense. For then, all the parts do not have the less of the all the parts do not have less authority of the subjects, and their division makes all of them together weaker when opposed to the sovereign. So therefore, their the division makes them weaker. The sovereign is stronger in that sense. In the sense that that vision of it, that it weakens that, and therefore that it, it balances the relationship between government and sovereign. This same difficulty can also be prevented by establishing intermediate magistrates, who, leaving the government, uh, uh, leaving the government whole, merely serve to balance the two powers and maintain their respective rights. Then the government is not mixed; it's tempered. So therefore, you can have the mixed government would have different th different things. Well, this is tempered government. So there's a different distinction between mixed government, which is that there is a, in other words, that there is this ratio here of these different functions. And therefore, the, it is difficult to prevent this by intermediate magistrates, who leaving the government, uh, who leaving the government as a whole, merely serves to balance the two powers. In maintaining their respect and and to maintaining their respective rights, and this is not mixed. This is tempered. The op uh, the opposite difficulty can be remedied by similar means, and when the government is too loose, tribunals can be set up to consolidate it. So therefore, you create a tribunal to consolidate it. This is done in all democracies. In the first case, the government is divided in order to be weakened. In the second, it is divided to be strengthened. For the maxim, uh, for the maxim of force and of weakness are found both uh, are are both found in simple government. So, therefore, the maxims of force and of weakness are found in simple government. Whereas mixed 
uh, uh, whereas mixed forms produce an average. Okay, so therefore, simple governments can produce either overall weakness, overall uh, uh, of uh, maxims of force, overall force in, in the question of weakness found in simple, whereas in mixed governments produce an average force, right? And there we end it in that sense, right? This is that we are ending. This is calculation of this thing. Uh, and we end it here. So therefore, that's it. We're going to stop here. We're going to put any questions or comments. Please put them below. Uh, uh, and I, um, once I get them, because the next chapter is eight, which is beyond the scope of today's uh, thing, uh, please uh, uh, put your comments, issues that you read, or did you want me to further elaborate? Um, if you like the video, like it, hit the like button, share it, share it with friends there on social media. Uh, if you're not subscribed, subscribe, please, and encourage others to subscribe. Let's grow the channel some in that sense. Um, if you didn't like it, you can always say no, hit, you know, hit the thumbs down button, but say why in the notes. Explain, and maybe I can learn from it and improve things. Next, um, uh, um, you can follow my links on social media. Links are below. Another thing you can do is... Um, uh, follow my academic, the social academic social media links about, as my, what I do with my, my own scholarship, uh, these special academic social media sites. And then uh, the other thing you can do is if you want to help me to do what I do, you want to contribute, be help contribute to this, you can do so by becoming a member of Subscribestar Patreon. A very little money. It's like one dollar. I think the most five dollars. You know, that's like that weird thing. Um, you can do so by doing that there. It helps a lot, really, if you do it. I, I'm, I, I, I don't know, right now you have no members, so why am I doing it? I, yeah, free riders. Everyone's a free rider. Yes, I understand. And I'm doing this. Well, maybe no one wants this. Oh, this is not that useful. Yeah, I, I'm too late into the game. I should have got here 20, five years ago, six years ago. If I was here six years ago, seven years ago, um, my, you know, I know uh, my Northern Illinois co council, Lori Johnson, has been doing this for at least five, six years. Uh, but she does better videos. She has more. Uh, she has like uh, PowerPoint and talking over PowerPoint or things like that. I just just bring the text and there I'm simple. This is boring. I don't do that graphics. I'm not into graphics in that sense. Uh, maybe you should. It's entertaining. We need to be entertained. Oh, well, okay. This is that. Um, um, yeah, whatever. I prefer the sticks method, the sticks hexagram. We're just saying there like this. Uh, 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 I'm not as popular as sticks. Uh, but yeah, whatever. Uh, the second next thing is, um, um, like I said, contribute. You can help. The other way you can help me is buy one of my books. This links are below. And that's it. That's the kind of things. Um, uh, we will continue next time. We'll look at chapters eight, nine, and ten. And uh, again, I'm itching my scratchy. I don't know why itching and scratchy is happening here. Uh, allergies, right, man? Allergy, and maybe I have to go wash my face to get something. Something's in the air. But uh, well, that's it. We'll take care and have a good day. See you. See you next time. And have a bye bye.